So uh, it's a blatantly false assumption. It's, uh, it's, it's the most criticized assumption about the classical model. And it seems like you should be able to do better, right? We know how to model uh, relationships between terms. We can compute prob uh, conditional probabilities of one word uh, co-occurring with another instead of treating them all in isolation. Um, and there has been lots and lots of attempts to do this. So the first attempt dates back to 1977. Um, it, was, it was done by Van Weisbergen, and he said, okay, so instead of treating these probabilities as totally independent, independent of each other, uh, instead of treating the words as totally independent of each other, let's add some dependencies. Let's make the words uh, depend on each other in some way. And what he said is, um, well, let's build, a, let's build a spanning tree that's going to represent the dependencies uh, in our vocabulary. So uh, each word is going to have a parent word, and the probability of that word occurring or non-occurring will be conditioned on the parent, occurring or non-occurring. So this is an example of a first order dependence. First order because uh, if you sort of imagine a chain of all the words, you're conditioning each variable on its immediate predecessor, the parent. Uh, and by the way, the parent, uh, it doesn't have anything to do with the sequence, right? We're dealing with a Bernoulli model, so a word can depend on the word that seems to be the most predictive for it. So Barack could depend on, uh, on Obama, regardless of in which order they occur in the document and if there are words in between them. Right. So uh, a next spanning tree would look something like that. So if you had a document, he likes to wink and drink, pink ink, uh, and drink ink without the word pink in it. Um, so uh, this is our vocabulary. All, all of these words are in our vocabulary. And this is an example of what an MST dependent structure could look like over that vocabulary. So for example, uh, likes could be the root term. And then occurrence or non-occurrence of wink would depend on whether likes occurred in the document. And same for drink, and same for two, and the word and would depend on whether two occurs or doesn't occur in the document, and so on and so forth, right? And, and likes itself depends on the, uh, on the null, on the, on, the, on the root of the tree. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, now if you had the following dependence model and your document was he likes to wink and drink ink, uh, so all of these words occurred, the word pink did not occur. The way you would compute the probability for this document under the dependence model is you would uh, condition each word on its parent, right? So likes doesn't have a parent, so you just take the probability that likes occurs. Uh, two occurs in the document, and two is conditioned on likes, so you take the conditional probability that two occurs given that likes occurs. And the reason uh, that you're conditioning on likes is because likes did occur uh, in the document. Otherwise, you would be conditioning on not likes. Um, and, and the same for all the other words. Now, uh, you come here. The word pink doesn't occur in the document. It's not part of the document. So you have a zero uh, for that Bernoulli variable. So instead of taking probability of pink given drink, I take one minus that because that gives me the probability that the word pink doesn't occur in the document, assuming that the word drink does occur, because pink depends on drink, and drink did occur in my model, right? And then for the next word, ink depends on pink. Uh, now, pink didn't occur in my document, so I take the dependent structure, I condition pink on pink, but I condition it on the event that pink didn't occur, because, pink, because that's what happened in my document, right? Okay. I'm sorry? Who does decide that the word, that structure comes from? Okay, so who decides how to structure these words? Uh, this is just a dumb example, right? I just threw this together uh, uh, as, as an example. Now, the way Reisbergen did it is he actually constructed an MST based on the mutual information between the terms. So he took every pair of terms, computed the mutual information. We had the formula when we talked about the synonymy. Right. Uh, computed that, that gives, a level, uh, that gives a value that tells you how well associated the two terms are. Uh, and that gives a full graph, right? It's a, it's, a, it's a vocabulary by vocabulary matrix. And then out of that matrix, he constructs a spanning tree. So for each, uh, basically he constructs a tree that maximizes the mutual information on the edges. So the edges represent the maximum dependency. So each word is going to be paired up with a word that maximally predicts it. So, so that's, that's what he did. 
Uh, it has to be done for every link, which, yes, you. Uh, you Yes, you would do it differently for a different corpus. I mean, that's not a big deal, right? The key point is you don't have to do it separately for each document. <laughs> that's what that's what you don't want to do. That's what you want to avoid. Uh, so another, do you have a question? If we have a word in our document that doesn't occur in our corpus, what happens? If you have a word in the document that doesn't occur in the corpus, how is that going to happen? Yeah, as, as soon as you observe a document, that document is a part of the corpus. So you, so you expand your yeah, your yeah, MSD. your 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 MSD. Well, okay, right. You conveniently brush it under a carpet. You you pretend that you can instantly retrain this beast. Okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, because we're not we're not concerned with computation, we're just concerned with whether what is this a useful thing to do? Is this good? Is this going to make results better? Like that's, that's what you're trying to determine at this point. Because the probabilistic model, you're concerned about how well it performs. And that's what the assumptions are about. The assumptions are presumably what cripples it, what doesn't let it achieve 100% accuracy. That's, that's why you sometimes get non-relevant results, presumably, because of the independence assumption. Uh, so, um, but, but is this clear how this works? Right? So basically, you say that each word is going to depend on some other word, so you no longer have independence. Words are influenced by each other. They come in these chains, effectively. Um, <clears throat> and the way you estimate the structure is by looking at the mutual information between the words and picking the most significant, the most informative edges, and then building a max spanning tree out of them. OK, great. So uh, it's a nice model. Uh, it makes sense. You're picking the most important dependencies in each case. and. Uh, uh, and uh, another thing that's kind of nice about this is the total number of parameters in this model isn't huge, right? So typically, when you start introducing dependencies, uh, if you if you come from a language modeling world, like right? so, if you if you've seen bigram language models, as soon as you go from a unigram to a bigram, you square the number of parameters, right? So here, that's not actually happening. The number of parameters is twice that of the independence model. So it's it's nice and well contained. Why is it twice? Well, because we're only looking at occurrence and non-occurrence of the terms. So for occurrence and non-occurrence, you need one parameter, p, the probability that the word will occur. Uh, for, uh, but here, the reason you have two parameters is you need to condition on the occurrence of the parent and on the non-occurrence of the parent. Right? So notice we have p of he given drink. This is conditional on drink occurring in the document, but we're also going to have cases like that where the parents didn't occur. And then we'll have another document where pink occurred. So we need a set of probabilities for ink based on pink occurring, that's one P, and another uh, parameter for ink based on pink not occurring, so that's not. So the total, number, the total number of parameters is twice that in the basic model, and that's nice. You're not exploding things, right? So, so um, you know, basically, if this model doesn't work, it's not because we have introduced incredible sparseness in the data, because we haven't. It's not that much. So um, he did that, and uh, he tried that, and um, it didn't work terribly well. It's a nice model, but it doesn't seem to improve things, right? So of course, that was a while ago, and um, uh, and it seems like a juicy target. So just about every year since 77, somebody comes along and proposes another way to model uh, term dependencies, another way to introduce these conditional probabilities into the structure. And the sad thing is, um, you never really get any improvement from them, right? And, that, and by, this, by this time, you're talking about over 30 years of research. Um, so, 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 so what's going on? Why does it seem to not improve things at all? Uh, so it's, it's a strange result. It should be improving results because we know that modeling dependence is useful in other fields, right? If you came to... Um, if you came to a speech recognition person, or if you came to an MT person, and you said, well, you know, how would you like to use Unigram for your Unigram models for your system everywhere? And they would say, you're crazy. It's not going to work. Right? We need dependencies. So for those fields, 
uh, modeling dependencies makes all the difference. And in information retrieval, it seems to not make any difference at all. So, um, so why, is that, uh, why is that the case? How can you explain it? Uh, there is no answer, of course. Right? Whenever you have negative results, something doesn't work. You always, there's always an explanation, well, we haven't found the right way to use it yet. So, um, but, but, but it's been a while, so, um, <clears throat> and, it's, um, and, it's, and it's not very likely that it will all of a sudden start working. So what are the possible explanations why it doesn't work? Well, think about why do you use dependence in, field like, in fields like speech recognition or machine translation. The reason you do that is you have a system that generates text. Right. And for that text to be readable by a human being, and it does need to be readable because at the end of the day, a human is going to look at your output, that text has to be grammatical. It has to be well-formed. And the reason that you need dependencies in something like ASR or MT is because if you don't introduce dependencies, if you put the words in a, in a random order, humans are not going to like it. They will get the gist of what's being said, but they will not like the output. They won't think, they won't think it's fluent. They won't think it's well-formed on the surface. So you need bigrams or trigrams to handle the surface form of the string. And information in, in information retrieval, you're not creating new strings of text. Anything that you're working with is already well-formed. It's already grammatical, by definition, because some human wrote it. So you're not trying to produce new strings of text. So it's, uh, at some level, it's a waste of the probability mass to try to model the dependencies that you don't need for the output. Of course, that doesn't, expel, uh, that doesn't explain why it doesn't work. Uh, it just says that it you know, might not be the most obvious thing to try. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, so this is one explanation. And another explanation is a bit weird. Another explanation is that the probabilistic model doesn't really assume ter term independence. Uh, now, uh, that seems to be contradictory because when we, when we did the derivation, we specifically said we're going to assume term independence. And that's what allowed us to take the joint probability for a document and decompose it into the product of the marginals. Uh, but it turns out that you, uh, you, uh, you need a significantly weaker condition than uh, independence. Uh, so you can make a significantly weaker assumption and still derive the model. So uh, let's, look at, uh, let's look at why this is the case. Uh, 